obviously spoiler warning i know a lot of people are starting to get weird about this because they're starting to show more and more about the game and everything like that so if you are the kind of person that's trying to avoid some spoilers and stuff like that for diablo 4 then this be your warning In the eternal conflict between the high heavens and the burning hells, Diablo 4 offers you more choice than ever before. Player choice is infused into everything, from how you look, the skills you use, the loot you equip, your path through the non-linear story, to how and when you choose to explore the shared open world. We want players to play their own way and have their own choice of how they're going to build their character. Between all of our different systems, you can really create a custom character in ways that was not available in previous Diablo titles. I mean, look, I I, I, I want to say this like I'm not a I'm not a huge um, cosmetics guy, transmog guy, anything like that. It's something that I dabble with in games, but like knowing for instance as a community and also just in general how much fun we had with like the fucking transmog system in outriders for example and like the stuff that you can get in destiny these are all games that i enjoy like it's and then also looking at like how much i sometimes spend on you know fucking operators which means different costumes and something like dmz or, or whatever um I have a new appreciation for the ability to make your character look like unique and everything like that. And I definitely like the options that are available in Diablo, at least what we saw in the betas. Because oftentimes with these things, it can be like that the cosmetics can be, you know, not on, on point with the aesthetic of the game. Sometimes they they fuck that up. So like the, the cosmetics will end up being like too colorful or, you know, something like that. I'm not saying they're making them wear fucking clown suits, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, one thing that I know about Diablo is that they've mentioned that the seasons will have themes to them and this will this will translate to the cosmetics as well. So that will mean that you kind of like have a situation of if you miss out on one or two or three se uh, like seasons, then most likely they will also be cosmetics within those seasons, in those season passes that will not be available to you. And in a way, this obviously also inspires like some form of FOMO and, and all of that. But I, I really do like the fact that two, three, four seasons in, we're going to be able to see how many different weird, crazy combinations that people can come up with. And because the art style is so dark and gritty, uh, and gothic, I just, I just think it looks really good. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm usually not bothered by the shit. I usually don't give a fuck, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty into it. When you log into Diablo 4, the first thing you're going to have to do is create your character. And those familiar with Diablo are going to be very familiar with the screen with all the classes sitting around the campfire. In Diablo 4, we got five classes. The Barbarian is your fantasy of a fierce warrior or fighter. The Barbarian is the weapon master of Diablo 4, being able to pick up any weapon, jump into the fray, and oh, do that's really my shit. stuff with it. They're very strong. They're very physical. They can take different weapons for different situations and use them Jesus. to their maximum effect. Dude, that was executed. really your elemental mage. You have fire, ice, lightning. You can either focus on one, or you can kind of be a jack of all trades mage and use abilities from all three they're a little more fragile than other classes tend to be more glass range. cannon baby the rogue unlike the barbarian they are a little bit more clever they're very fast they have the ability to imbue their weapons with different elemental energies and they can modify them to do different things dude i think i think out of all of the so doing a quick tier list here out of the two betas and the trans marks that i was using on all my um, I could very easily just say barbarian was the fucking best but honestly for me like the male rogue the the costume the transmog that i had on him was fucking insane like really fucking cool um and i also i really liked the fe the, the the sorcerer the sorcerer the was the female sorcerer was fucking great great fucking costumes awesome shit uh i did not i mean this is just gonna sound like hating on the fucking druid again but dude like the druid had some really ass looking fucking trash box and again i am not i'm not hating on the druid because it's cool to hate on the druid i actually think the druid's pretty fucking sweet but fucking hell man the rogue has two different types of play styles you have the ranged crossbow type gameplay or you have that in your face daggers poisons you can lead the enemies into traps that have huge effects fucking debated 
Oh, dude. The druid is really this shapeshifter. When you cast certain skills, you change your form, what you look like and what you can do. They can turn into... Can I, can I just quickly go back? Just Does this not look to you guys like where you fight Adria? Is this where you fight Adria? Or is... It, this looks like something I've seen before. Is this not from Diablo 2 in the desert? You change your form, what you look like and what you can do. They can turn into werebears or werewolves. If I cast a werewolf skill, I turn into a werewolf and I do werewolf things. If I cast like pulverize, for example, which is a werebear skill, I turn into a werebear, I slam the ground really hard. If it's the fantasy, it's pretty cool. They can also become masters of nature magic with earth and storm magic. Last but not least, we got the Necromancer. They raise armies of the dead. They have different types of minions. You've got your skeletal warriors. No, Duriel was Duriel was in the cave underneath. Um, so then it's not Duriel. That looks like the outside area where where you fight that that bitch is like a giant moth. Is that the dude? My shit is all melting together. Is that Diablo three? Where you fight the that shoot you with the green moth fucking shit? That's Diablo three, isn't it? That's how Duriel is in the cave. The real is the giant slug looking fucking thing. There's your skeletal mages and then your golem. You have blood magic or bone magic that you can also take advantage of and tackle combat that way. If you've played a previous Diablo game and you enjoyed a certain play style, you can actually bring that into Diablo 4 or just try something completely new. No matter which class you play, there's going to be multiple different avenues and fantasies that you can chase. You can customize your character in ways you've never been able to before with near endless character creation and transmog options. In previous Diablo games, you had to be attached to certain archetypes and look a certain way. And in Diablo 4, it's really up to you how you want your character to look. Dude, that's a You're fidelity is fucking insane. From different facial structures from people all over the world. No matter where you are, you'll be able to say, hey, I can actually make someone that looks like me or looks like someone from my part of the world, which we're really proud of. You can pick a hairstyle for your character and every class actually has a specific hairstyle that no other class can use. You can pick your oh. eye color. We have some really fun ones. We have eye glowing. We have a bloodshot type eye. And then you can actually pick a marking, which is a tattoo or a design that covers your entire Dude, character. I think like straight up though, the fucking tattoo options in this game and the fact that you can color those and like the deep black, the deep red, all that stuff and those tattoos look fucking insane um really good it might be my favorite thing and there are dozens of those transmog is the idea that you can take a piece of gear and change the appearance of it to look like a different piece of gear as far as aesthetics the sky is the limit however you can think of making your character you can make it that way everybody's going to look completely different in diablo 4. One of our pillars for class design Diablo 4 is this idea that we want players to play the way that they want to. When you first start the game, we introduce you to the idea of the skill tree. As you level up, you get access to these different skills or passives or upgrades to make your character more powerful. Each category has a few different skills that are all similar. They're either all defensive or all offensive, all ice or all fire. You can either focus on a very specific section or you can- Get a little bit of everything. The first skill point when you unlock a new skill is gonna give you access to that skill. After that, you can put additional points in. So here's the thing, right? And I think they're gonna say that now, but I'm gonna be a douchebag and say it before them. You have to- you have to be be like appreciative of the fact that the more points you put into a skill actually changes the way that skill looks the way that so like it like if like one out of five for instance looks different to five out of five into any skill that you have then it's going to make it better whether it increases the radius or adds some new effect or reduces the cooldown through some special way but you can actually branch out in a very different direction even if two characters actually started at the same place the Paragon board is a late game system that once you've completely filled out your skill tree, Dude, you I cannot wait for this shit. Really let you delve into the theory crafting and the depth of Diablo 4 skill system. And these boards, they can move through them, spending their Paragon points, and they have nodes that give them very basic stats like intellect or dexterity. We also have more powerful nodes. We have rare nodes that have different effects where they can totally modify a skill to do something additional or different or they can even make new connections between skills so that players can have new ways to play their character. Legendary nodes are equivalent to legendary powers where they have more powerful effects that can change the builds and ways. Let's check this out quickly. Hold on one sec. I feel like this might be a new one. Powerful effect. 
um aldrich bounty uh legendary node when you attack with an imbued skill you gain 20 percent resistance and 20 percent increased damage for that impugnment element for jesus rare nodes oh my fuck okay so this is just this is just this is the board selection so it's telling you the things that are inside this board so aldrich bounty every 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 board by the way has one legendary node right so the legendary node on this board is called Aldrich Bounty, and then it also tells you the rare nodes that are on here. So this is gonna help you like go like okay, which board should I focus on and and go? But fuck man, this is good stuff. Effects that can change the builds and ways that characters play. You can start planning this long journey of okay, I want to hit this node, and then I want to hit this node, and I'm gonna apply this board, and I'm gonna start from this side, and really just get into a super complex, very specific build for your character. Fuck. Legendary items are really rare and powerful items that you're gonna find as you adventure through the world of Sanctuary. We have quite a few different demonic. What's up, baby? And how they do Welcome that. back some to the stream, man. Change your skill or enhance it in some way. Frozen orb, for example, it might say, hey, every single time you use your frozen orb, it applies a new effect. And then I can actually take advantage of that new effect that it has. Even if the item itself is maybe not as good as the one you have, you can still extract that power from it, take advantage of it, and use it for your build. One thing that our players can look forward to is that a lot of our classic, really rare, and most powerful items from previous titles are going to be returning as uniques in Diablo 4. Unique items? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, Shaco's back, fucking Wind Force, like a lot of the... So, so actually, actually a lot of the... the I, I think pretty much all of it's been data mined. So um, if, if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to know what presents they get for Christmas, then obviously don't go looking for that. But this stuff has been available out in the wilds on like Reddit and shit like that for a while. But there's like a whole bunch of shit that's returning from like previous games, like fan favorite stuff like that. I, by the way, have not seen Stone of Jordan though. So I'm a little bit, I'm like low key fucking a little bit upset about that. But I, I could just maybe not have seen it. But I don't think Stone of Jordan is in. So that's like a, a little bit of like a fucking for me but um yeah but there's a whole bunch of stuff from previous you know games in here and it's just mm, 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 mm. are very similar to legendaries but they're unique which means if that ability is actually on a chess piece it's always going to be on that chess piece because it's more powerful than a regular legendary effect Crafting is a big part of Diablo 4. We have all kinds of different ways that you could upgrade and interact with NPCs to make your gear better. You can increase the item level or power of your gear, so you can actually get a piece of gear and just make it stronger. You can also add sockets to your gear so that you can put gems inside of it. There are a lot of different ways that players will be able to customize their experience in Diablo 4. Every single player is going to have a different experience and a different Yo, man, fucking hell. Because we have all of these different ways to make your own character, there's a lot more possibility compared to previous titles of how you want to play, how you want to build your character. We really are doubling down on this idea that you can look the way you want, you can play the way you want, you can really make your own fantasy in this game. Hell welcomes all, and so does Diablo 4. In the coming weeks, we'll be sharing even more about how to play your way. Now, our launch on June 6th is getting closer. Closer still if you got early access. And we can't wait to see you in Sanctuary. Hail Lilith, blessed mother. Oh! I mean... <sighs> Dude, that... I'm sorry. That shit is just so fucking dope. Like, all of this is just... Like, it's, it's increasing the FOMO level, level by, like nine fucking thousand i mean i'm fucking ready like holy shit 